Welcome back, everybody. This week in America, coast to coast. Thank you for spending some time with us on the program tonight. Back with us, Robert Maxim, one of our favorite and most popular guests, back to share his incredible journey through several lifetimes as far back as a million years. His blunders, triumphs, and many of the worlds and places where these amazing experiences took place. Robert has experienced several sleep time visits to other worlds as a child, witnessed countless alien craft. These experiences continue to date in both wake and sleep states. He studied concert piano starting at age three, changed his calling to science following his visionary experiences. The book, the legacy series, the culmination of these experiences, shared with the world for the first time. And he's back with us on This Week in America to take your questions. Robert, as always, welcome back to the program. Always look forward to this. A lot of great questions that were better than the host could come up with from the uh, from the <laughs> listeners and the viewers for the program tonight. How you been? Welcome back to the program. Well, thank you. Feel great to be here. Thanks for the opportunity and thanks to listeners. Yes, for all of uh, the questions that they've submitted, you've got some more seminars that you'll be doing. We'll talk about those during the course of the program. Let's uh -huh. jump right in because we have so many questions and so many good ones, and I'm anxious to catch your answer on many of these. Hmm. First question, what happens to our soul between lives? How long before we are reincarnated? Oh. Well, death doesn't exist, but we have to use the term. So... Uh, during the time after our death and before our next birth, we're actually hosted by higher celestial worlds where we learn. These are like schools where we'll prepare for our next incarnation mission, and we make contact who we're going to meet, what we're going to work out uh, on our next mission, etc. Now, in Earth terms, we may be there for months, or maybe years it could be even three days it could be 300 years it all depends on our connection to our next incarnation or who uh, who is coordinated to be synchronized to meet and when where etc so that's what happens up there um, the word Shabbat for example which is Saturday in Hebrew it's a perfect example of what that means uh, to basically die of this world and elevate ourselves to these in-between live celestial worlds where we actually learn and drink from celestial fountains and we prepare for our next incarnation. Now, one word says it all. So the word Shabbat translated properly, that is exactly what it means, what happens to our soul between lives. Interesting, and that's a good question because we talk often about coming back and what happens in that interim period here. So it's sort of a period of what learning for us. You mentioned it's like going back to school and, and lessons. That is correct. We review what we did well, what we didn't do so well in this life. And we say, well, now for the next lesson, we're going to catch up. We're going to do this. Uh, we're going to set up these test scenarios and we're going to have these experiences so that we further progress and weed out uh, lack of understanding of infinity until we can evolve out of these physical worlds. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program, his legacy series available at his website, Argatan, G-A-E-T-A-N.com, of course, available at uh, Amazon. It's an interesting series of books, information on our website as well, thisweekinamerica.us. Next question from a listener. I think I heard you explain that there is a heaven-like place that is temporary. Is there a hell also? Yeah. It's called planet Earth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I can see, see that one coming, and I couldn't <laughs> and argue with you, one. actually. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. Well, just imagine that we are in this central plane, and above this plane, you could say are the celestial kingdoms, the celestial worlds, uh, the heaven-like places. Well, beneath it also there are lesser celestial places, shall we say, a hell state. Uh, but really, hell is a state of mind that you encounter when you part from your higher self. When you commit suicide, for example, at which point you're in the hands of these lower astrals, these planes that are beneath this plane. Some religions and beliefs call them demons. And that's even a worst case venture. So is there a hell? Yeah, this world is one. Uh, 
inside we do have a hell we carry it with us uh, but after after our death there are hell planes that uh, would be more than willing to have us as their customers and i sure would not like to go there it's interesting we grow up in organized religion and warned that if you lead a bad life if you do things against the uh, uh, against that religion, you'll burn in hell forever. Does a hell exist where you would burn forever? Is there a hell as we know it? Well, if you translate the parable correctly, it doesn't really mean that. It, uh, you're really suffering for a very long period of time. And yes, uh, when you die, you can go up to the celestial kingdoms and then come back. But if you die and you go to these sub-astral places, you eventually you're going to come back too. So it's not an eternal thing. You can decide once you're down here, you can decide not to come back. Uh, there are some uh, lower astral forms that just keep regressing and regressing and regressing and regre regressing until they are absorbed and they got to start from scratch again in the revolution. So there's just no need to get to that stage. We can all work out our differences. We can all be sincere with ourselves and just get over whatever wrong we've done, learn the right thing and move on. Let's not slip down there. Yes. <laughs> the way to go is yes. up there. Such, a little suffering, a lot of gain. Such great information during these programs, Robert Maxim. Our guest next question, when was your last visit? Can you share the details? I had a, not long ago, I had a three in one, actually. And it was one astro flight that had three astro flights in them. Uh, the first was to Saturn. And I was actually instructed uh, about what I was just talking about and, and basically not to worry about negative feelings and to focus on serving humanity at all times whether we felt great or we felt bad or we felt scared just to move forward now from there I was sent to another plane which was Venus and there I was taught another lesson I was shown four images I was shown an elephant, a fountain, an individual, and a tree. Now, right away I recognized what this meant. The elephant never forgets memory. It represented the negative self or the lower self. This tree over here, it was kind of curious because the tree kind of had a face on it, but on top there were planets going around the leaves. And my, my brothers were there watching and making sure that I understood what this meant. What this tree meant, it was the tree of life. And the tree of life is the life that exists in this solar system. Uh, that was basically pronounced by the planets and going around. Now, something very important about this tree of life. If we read in Genesis, we come up with the tree of life. Now listeners begin to understand what tree of life basically means, which is the life, the tree, the solar system, all the beings that live in the solar system, and the brotherhood of life that brings us all together. That's what it means. So between elephant and tree of life, there was a fountain, a path to get from the elephant, yes. this tree, you have to stop at this fountain and drink from it. Now, what are you drinking from that fountain? Exactly what the word Shabbat means. Drink from heavenly fountains. Learn the universal law. Learn about the infinite. Put it to use. Um, once you learn that, then you can move on and become part of this brotherhood of this tree of life, where right now we really are not. You see, that's our future. Now, the person that was standing between the fountain and the tree had another meaning. That individual had his hand just below his heart. I don't think you can see it here in the camera. 
but his left hand was uh, pressing down. And I immediately realized that what this meant is to be a member of this brotherhood, you have to receive from the infinite, fill your heart, mm, every okay. cavity of it, with this infinite sincerity, truth, love, and goodness. Fill it, and then pass it on to the world beneath you. So you cannot live any life and not keep what you left behind uh, in this order. For example, if I get up in the morning, I should do my bed. Uh, if I, uh, if I uh, before I leave to work, I have to brush my teeth. I have to take a shower. I have to shave. I have to take care of what I have here. So as part of being a member of this brotherhood, you have certain duties where you cannot leave what you use here behind in bad shape. So that was that, that statement. And I think the audience has heard me before say that there are three laws. Number one, give everything for everyone. Ask nothing for yourself and serve the elements. Those three statements can be encapsulated in this picture. So once again, fill your heart with all of the goodness of the infinite. Take that goodness and pass it on. Be a reservoir, a receiver. Open the door. Be a door opener to this to this higher intelligence and let it pass to you. Let the things that you do be, shall we say, inspired right. uh, by this greater intelligence. And everything that you do on this life, leave everything in order. Don't leave anything, anything in any type of disorder so that you can move on. Now, that was the second. The third, I was taken on to another, uh, another astral plane, and this was actually Mars. And I was greeted in a special way, and I was basically taught about what everybody is interested in, life longevity, which is personal hygiene. Now, it's vital. Personal hygiene of the mind. Mm. You're always thinking about something negative. Are you always concerned? Are you always worried? Or are you thinking about something positive? That's mental hygiene. And lack of mental hygiene is responsible for just about every disease and every problem that we have, including aging. So there is also another part to personal hygiene, which is digestive. And it's also cleanliness uh, as you are outside you are, you're also inside so to attain a healthy life a happy life free from this elephant I was talking about and live for a long time you have to watch out for number one excesses of every type if I have a car why do I need another five okay watch out for excesses because again what you bring down you have to leave in order. You cannot have any excesses. Uh, you have to watch out for entertainment. You have to look for your character intensity. That's also important. How about your desires? The food that you eat. Are you a vegetarian? Are you a meat eater? Are you contaminating yourself with the minerals and proteins that you're obtaining from an animal? If you went to the plant, you would not have been contaminated. So that also adds to aging. You have to eat foods that promote the growth of glutathione in your body. That extends your life. So we have to be very careful not to think about uh, teaching others as well. That's also another hygiene part that most people wouldn't think of. Most people think, well, I've got this information. I've got to go save this individual. Not good. That creates karma, and that contaminates you and the other person. So we must instead show others how to live by means of your thoughts, of your actions, of your eating habits, 
uh, your smile, your health, and, and your hygiene. That's, that's the only thing you need to be involved with. Anything else is an excess, it's selfish, and it's destroying you, and it's destroying this world. Again, fill your heart with infinity, pure infinity, pure sincerity, and pass it on. That is the trick. I, I Your information, helps. boy, that was that was a great answer. In, in so much there that people need for worthwhile, fulfilling lives. Robert's website is rgaten, g a e t a n dot com. You can go there, find all this. It's so much information there, including information on the book, the Legacy Series. We're taking listener viewer questions during the course of the program tonight. You also can contact us at, at our website, thisweekinamerica.us, or at Robert's website, and we'll address your, your questions on an upcoming program. Next question, are there aliens here that would we would consider angels? Aliens here that we would consider mm -hmm. angels? Well, what does the word angel mean? The word means messenger. And that they are. These beings are among us, and they mm. are messengers. Now, who is a messenger? A person that brings, uh, say, a telegram to my door? That's a messenger. Uh, Rick Bratton giving a show? He's a messenger. So, and I'm not an angel, so <laughs> that... Uh... Well, <laughs> uh, basically, I've, I know I'm exaggerating the note a little bit, but I yes, want the listener mean, to yes. understand. Yeah, uh, of course, these beings are not going to tell you, hey, I am I'm from Mars. Yeah, go go tell the news and have me arrested. Yeah, uh, they're not going to do that. But by their, by how they show themselves is, again, the message. And that's how we should be angels. That's how we should be messengers by our actions, by our cleanliness, by what we receive and what we pass on. That is all the messaging. That is all the angeling that we need to do. So we can think that there, there, there are others that are angels that are living among us. We can also be those angels. Robert Maxim with us on the program, author of the Legacy Series. Sometimes we lose a side of the Legacy Series. We get so caught up in the uh, the listener and the viewer questions. You'll find that information on his website. Book series available at Amazon as well. Question, is there a devil that tempts us to do bad things? Is there actually a devil? That's another thing that we're taught in, in religion. Yes, there is. And the biggest devil is inside us. That's the biggest devil. Uh, yes, this whole world is designed to be a devil. Uh, all the different temptations that are out there, and and the bad mannerisms, and the foul language, and the and the bad food, uh, the lack of concern for humanity, the wars, the politics. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of demonic things out out there. But you know. Um, if you are this angel mess. you do have another door you can open. You don't have to open up the door to your lower side. You can close it, open up the other door, which is the goodness door, and begin to draw more from that door. So close the door on your own Satan, on your own devil, and open up the door on your own angel and let it live through. Help somebody that way. Humble yourself, sacrifice your, your own desires, and do something lovingly for someone else. So we all have like personal devils. Absolutely, we've made them. <laughs> and like I told some individuals, uh, you spent 10 million years creating who you are. Don't tell me you're disappointed. <laughs> for, the, yeah. for the most part, that's what we have created. We and there was created. a devil in me that made me sneeze there for a second ago. I don't know if you can hear or say that, but that's the, uh, the I'll look at the, uh, the allergens in the air and I'll consider those to be uh, demonic instruments. Uh, Robert Maxim with us on the program, taking your questions and really some good questions and, and more to come, a longer program today with Robert. Next mm -hmm. question is, do you believe in channelers? Are they really hearing voices from beyond? 
Interesting, uh, interesting question. Looking forward to the answer. And here's a shocking answer. We are all channelers. How about that? Interesting. What we've we just not all. developed, or we understand that that we are. So we could all channel if we what we're we're tuned into that. We channel what we're tuned into. And don't forget, we have two doors. Which one do you want to open? One on the right, one on the left. Oh, okay. So we're all channelers. What for? That's what we have to worry about. We can channel ourselves. We think it's another being, but no, it's our lower self talking. It could be good or bad. Or it could be, say, a demonic astral force. How about that? It's best that we channel for ourselves only that we get our own answers, become our own teachers, and let others channel for themselves. Urge others to get their own answers, because otherwise, otherwise, the channeler can be interfering with that individual's progress, and that could mean karma. What if the channel information is wrong? Mm. Also, don't let others channel to you. Always test the spirit and learn to be your own teacher. Don't cheat. Don't cheat by going to somebody else, or it could cost you in the long run. Um, anytime that I channel for someone, uh, people ask me to channel for them, and I tell them, well, number one, uh, I don't channel on demand. That's number one. Mm, okay. number, n number two, if I do receive something, First, I will ask this. I will test the source. Make sure the te the the source passes the test. Number two, I will test you, the listener, to see if you're ready for the information. And if you are, then I will ask you for permission, giving you an understanding of what you have to do with that information. Now, if you pass all of those tests, then I'll start telling you and see how you react to see if you're actually getting it. If at any point you go, Bleh, you detour, I stop right there. But we have to be very careful what we tell people. I always urge individuals to learn the science of life, which is, of course, is a legacy. And encourage people to get their own answers, to review their thoughts daily, to review their dreams. And before you know it, they're getting answers. Uh, they're, they're getting answers to questions about life they never knew, and they don't even know where it comes from. It's coming from their higher self because they're, they're closing this old negative door. They're opening up the positive one, and now they get the answer. We cannot channel positively because we have that door shut. Just like I explained before, we have two doors. Close the negative, open the positive. That's how it works. Interesting, and if we knew how to do that and people are catching on as, as they're listening to you, it really makes life a lot better for us, doesn't it? When we, well, we're able yeah. to, to work with two functioning doors. Well, that's how life was designed to be. It's the norm. We are abnormal. It's very simple. Catch every one of your thoughts. Don't be afraid of them. Love them, however negative they are. Write them down. Step number one. Step number two, write down your dreams. Same thing. Don't be scared about them. Just write what they are. Be objective. And after a couple of weeks or months, you begin to deep dive into what's the cause, what's the emotional cause of these things. And then you begin to see yourself. You begin to feel two people. You feel your consciousness and you feel your lower self. And you can stand as your consciousness looking at your lower self going, yep, 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 I want this, I want that. And then you realize, my goodness, I didn't, I didn't know that that thing was controlling this thing. And now you begin to free yourself. You're completely objective. You're walking, you're walking down the street and you're watching out for this yapper here and keep it under control. Yes. Because right now, we do whatever it says. We do whatever it wants. We believe whatever it says. So that's where we start. And again, it's in legacy. Legacy will show how this actually works, at least from my perspective. The things that I had to face 
uh, the embarrassments that I had to go through uh, in my search for sincerity. And believe me, once you go down this route, you have to be very valiant. And you have to be dead honest with yourself. There is no sugarcoating your thoughts. None whatsoever. You have to be dead honest with yourself. And trust me, it's going to hurt. You're going to find out things about you that are going to shock you. The I'm nice sorry. thing about legacy is it's all, it's based on your experiences. So this, these are not like theories. These are actually incidents, lessons that you learned, the lessons uh, in legacy. And legacy, by the way, available at Amazon. You'll find it at Robert's website, our Gaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. Question, I have a friend who regularly visits a spiritual counselor who claims to offer clarity from past lives to heal a current situation. Oh dear. Are they legit and can someone do that? Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, I, okay, I think you answered the question. We'll, mind yeah. and, we'll stick with this for a few <laughs> minutes, but uh, clarify that, oh dear, exactly what uh, would that mean? Uh, <clears throat> the only person that can heal you and the only person that can take care of your personal problems is you. And what I just described is how to do it. Um, yeah, there are some there are some physical conditions, some illnesses that, that do require they do require this specific amount of help. But please don't just put yourselves in the hands of anybody. You have to test the spirit. You have to know who you're talking to, who's telling you. If somebody says, well, you were a princess in France in 1820. Okay, trust, but verify. Trust, but verify. Always verify things. Uh, and again, knowing the past is not clarity. It's not the answer. Knowing who you are and what you feel and this little yapping lower self uh, inside of you, that's the answer. That's what's making you sick. That's, that's what's keeping you from clarity. That's the first thing you got to fix. You have to fix you. And then the past will normally come to you. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program, his uh, book is The Legacy Series. And all of the, and this is show number 45 that we've done with Robert. All of the programs you'll find by going to thisweekinamerica.us, audio archives, video archives there on, on YouTube as well. Listen, uh, listener has this question. I've listened to a number of your interviews and what you say rings true to me. How do I begin to understand myself at deeper levels so I can clear my past karma and finally begin to heal? Ditto. Uh, that's what I just explained. Yes. It's the emotions that we don't know where they're coming from. We can't hear them because they are resonating as us. It's you. So you feels normal feels okay but no it's not okay if you're objective and you listen to you you find out am i really saying that am i really feeling that gosh that's not very nice <laughs> yeah. and and you get over that and you get more feelings you go even deeper it's like that was behind that that isn't nice at all so that is how you begin to really come out of the mess that we're in and again, everything in the world, down to foods, commercials, everything is designed to keep you blocked. So um, I guess play the tape back on what I said before. That's, yeah, exactly. That's how you do it. <laughs> in fact, that's probably a good idea to either record these or go back in our archives and you can download them because it's really it's sort of like a textbook where you can go back and refer to to different things that Robert has said to make an impact on your lives. A yeah. question, this is interesting and something I think that we've sort of addressed before. Do animals as well as humans have souls that are reborn? Absolutely. And I'm going to take it one other step. How about atoms? How about a waveform? What about a force? When we realize that everything in infinity has, uh, shall we say, a soul or an intelligence, then we really begin to see what the infinite is. Everything, everything that is in creation is intelligent. Let's call it the, the, the mind of God, the blood of God, whatever we can call it. It all comes from that. 
our thoughts, our atoms, our skin, our nails, our, our food, the atoms, every force, the wind, everything is made from him. So, and everything is intelligence because it carries a function. We have evolved acquiring those functions, learning those functions, so we put them into ourselves. What is our soul, what is our soul contained then? The same thing that these atoms contain, the same thing that these waveforms con uh, contain. What is a thought? A thought is no different than an atom. Our purpose is to take these energies, these waveforms that we have in our soul and step them up. Animals are trying to do the same thing. Atoms are trying to do the same thing. So the thing is that these forces appear and disappear, appear and disappear trillions and trillions and trillions of times each second. And so do we, by the way. Our bodies, our thoughts are appearing, disappearing, appearing, disappearing very fast as well. I like to call those miniature reincarnations. Miniature mm, reincarnations. Because that energy is appearing here and it's vanishing and it's going to those higher planes where we go when we die. Then it comes right back down again and appears and it goes back up again and it goes down and it goes up. That's why I call them miniature reincarnations. Now everything therefore reincarnates in small or large cycles. Our small one we call atomic oscillation. The large one we call death and rebirth or the official reincarnation. Everything that comes here has to return and replenish and return and replenish and return. So this is why death is necessary because we need to replenish. And eventually, eventually, death is a fantastic opportunity for us to go back home where we're eventually gonna live. And we don't wanna stay down here all of our evolution we're trying to get out of here. We're trying to go up there. So the more you learn about that infinite created celestial plane, the faster you're going to get there. But I hope that that helps. Yes, and in, in talking about death, another question follows along that line. Describe the afterlife. It sounds like you've, you have experienced it. Is it an actual geographical location? Uh, not exactly. In Legacy and in my website, I have drawings and videos of it. Uh, imagine being in this place that is all crystalline. The rocks, the flowers, the buildings, lights galore, there's peace and no sense of time whatsoever. If I want to go to a river and I think of it, I am there. If I look at a building and I want to change it, just the fact that I think of a different shape, that building will change automatically. Uh, there is no space, there is no time, everything is creative. That is the fountainhead source whence everything that is in this dimension appears. The afterlife, as I mentioned before, is a school to prepare us for our return. There are seven of these celestial wor worlds that I visited, and each is devoted to a different ac academic life subject, like education, leadership, uh, healing, uh, devotion, philosophy, there, there are seven overall, and Venus is one of these worlds. And if you go to my website, I have a video that I created on what Venus looks like. But pay attention to the crystalline rocks, the leaves, the flowers, the water, the cities. That's all documented up there. And take a look at where you go in between lives. I've said before, you can get information on Legacy at Robert's website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. That's one of many things. I mean, you literally could go there and spend hours, and that's one of the nice things and why I think Robert is so successful as a guest in his seminars and, and on programs like this is because you document things. You don't just make wild accusations. You have scientific evidence to, to back those up, and you'll, you'll find all of that at Robert's website. When you return to life in another form, the question goes, do you have memories of your past lives? You sure do. Uh, but the world and friends, schooling, parents, they help squash those memories. Usually by age six, that's it, you're done. We've all been programmed to forget. And I do remember uh, up until about 
the age of five or six, and I used to remember a lot of things. Gosh, I even I even played a violin when I was age two. I played a piano when I was three without an instruction. Uh, I spoke English when I was born. I spoke English to my uh, godfather when I was five. How did I know that? <laughs> you see, that's some of the yes. evidence. And, and the Internet is full. It's full of these experiences. You have children that are two, three years old, uh, Rick, and they are giving you names of who they were, the name where they lived, how they died. Uh, they described the house they lived, their parents. And then you take all that information, you go there. Oh, by the way, uh, was somebody here that lived by this name? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, everything checks out. How could a two and a three-year-old know that clear across the world? So that information is there probably in, in all of us but it's suppressed it in one manner or, uh, or another. That is correct, it is. And if people give themselves... I will make a suggestion to your listeners. On my website, there is a video that I call Atlantis and Lemuria. Go check that out. And for the next program, come back and uh, give us some tips of what you felt and see if you remember. Because that video is 100% of what it was like and what happened. So a lot of people, when they watch that, all of a sudden they remember. So, And that website is rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. If you go to thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to Robert's website. Next question is very simple, four words. Why are we here? Uh, because we can't be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Simply. I, I, I like that. Yeah, succinct. I like yeah. that. Yeah. We, our, our true home is the celestial worlds, but we can't be there because we have this massive ogre that, that keeps us down here. It's that yapper, that lower self. So if we don't do something to step aside, listen, and, and, and put some control on this lower self, we're never going to get out of here. And that's why we're here. We're here on a mission to, f to talk to this lower self and educate it so that we can eventually start bringing it up, bringing it up until we don't have to come back here. That's why we come back. Uh, we, have, we are not passing the grade. And we're not even going to start passing the grade until we start doing something about that lower self and doing something about that's the service, the service that we have to do. That's part of it. So those two things, that's why we are not there. Answered that about as succinctly as the, the question was, I like that. <laughs> it gives us something to, to think about. What do we have to do in this life to make sure we have a better next life? What I just said, that's it. Simple. We, Simple. Sometimes we make things more complicated, right, than what they need to be? That's right. Just positive, infinite love, service, and know yourself. And that's it. Then infinity takes care of you. Robert Maxim with us. Legacy, uh, actually, uh, the Legacy series. He's the author of the 45th time he's been on. Talking about the Legacy series and so many questions, questions that come from you, the listening audience. Next question my religion is built on worship of God and prayer. Do you worship a God and do you engage in prayer? Well, everything that I have said here tonight is a worship of, of the infinite creator. Uh, for me, God is everything. Now, to me, worship is truth and humility. That has to be part of one's belief, truth and humility. I praise and I entreat as just as Jesus ordered. And how did Jesus ask us to, to worship and pray? He said, love yourself as you would your neighbor, number one. Number two, love God with all your heart, your soul, your will, and your might, give it everything you've got. If you can't do that, 
there is no worship or prayer that will help. You can worship and pray all you want, but it's a hollow echo. Where the rubber meets the road is following the golden rule. So, something else about religion, I don't join any religion simply because if I join one, I am now disengaging myself from all these other brothers that have other beliefs. I support every belief there is, everyone. I don't set myself aside from anyone. That is rule number one. Love yourself as you would your neighbor. I don't love the neighbors just in this one group. I love the neighbors in this entire planet, whether they have a religion or they don't. So to be tested by Jesus' rule, love your neighbor as yourself. And don't set yourself aside from anyone else. And when you worship and you pray, do it with all of your will, your might, your heart, and your soul. Because if you cannot love yourself, you cannot love your neighbor. And if you cannot love your neighbor, you cannot love God. So you can worship or, and pray to God all you want. But if you haven't loved yourself first and started that stair step to your neighbor and to God, it's of no use. Sorry to say. So much to think about. I pause after each question, and it's not because I'm trying to figure out what question is next. Well, that's part of it, but I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to sort out mentally what you just said and interpret that. And I think a, a listener, a, a viewer, is probably going through that, that same emotion as, uh, as Robert is talking. I've got time for, a, a, let's see, do two more questions here, and these are good ones. When you go on a visit, are you in contact with people you have met on previous trips? Do you have a relationship with, with any brothers? Are these people you see more than once on a visit? Sometimes yes, sometimes they are. Uh, sometimes they're not. <clears throat> For example, uh, my, my first two Apunian visits, I met with the same four beings. My third Apunian visit, I met with the same four again. But then I met another 13. Uh, after that, and then I met another one with whom I actually got a name. The name of that 18th Apunian was Ivica. Uh, I, I've never been given a name otherwise. Why, why I mention this as being important is that, number one, these beings don't like to give out names. They like to be called brother or sister. Also, to be able to meet with them and have a contact with them, you had to have had a previous relationship with them, you see? Um, some You're people think that... This Week in America with Rick Bratton. On June 25th, 2009... Robert Sarah Maxim Michael is, is with... Uh, and I think that's coming from out here. I think somebody was trying to call me on my phone. Sorry about that. I had... <laughs> phone going off in the background. We tell our guest not to do that. I'll get to that here in a second. Let me ask you another question. Sure. Uh, so these are not people that you see on an ongoing basis. Then. Sometimes I do, and sometimes I do not. It, it varies. Uh, I have seen some, some beings as many as 200 times, repeatedly. Wow. And some others only once. That all depends. And I know that the ones I meet with the most are the ones that I have related with in the past the most. Interesting. Bob, Robert Maxim, our guest on the program. A, a couple minutes left, and this is a, a good question, uh -huh. and we'll close with this uh, on this, uh, this edition of Robert with us on this weekend, America. Is the gender we are at, at our original birth, the uh -huh. gender we are in our future lives, or can it change from life to life? If so, is that a reason someone struggles with gender identity? Boy, this listener is really on the stick. Perfect. Gave himself the answer. Uh, yes, we do alternate. We have to have a balance in gender. 
uh, between male and female before we can attain full spiritual evolution. Because up there, there is no gender. So we have to have that balance. Now, is that a reason for someone to struggle with gender identity? Absolutely. If a person has been uh, a male, and I say this from experience because I help a lot of individuals that come to me with gender identity problems. Uh, oh, this one individual, I won't mention names, has lived way too many male lives. And now as a female, struggles with this identity. I also know some uh, individuals that have lived a lot of female lives, and now they struggle in a male body. But this is, this is the balance that we have to seek. I fully respect these individuals. Uh, I understand the difficulties that they're in. And, you know, I, I look at my own difficulties and the problems that I go through, uh, and they have their struggles just as much as I have my own struggles. We are all here because we are at the same level. There is, there is no one that should be uh, outcast because of identity or some other problem. We're here to help each other and, and to love each other in every way that we can. Whether it's identity or it's ego or it's whatever problem we might have, we have to understand that's where we're at and we're here to try to work it out. So let's help each other work these things out. Let's be progressive. Let's be positive. Let's be helpful. And let's be understanding with every soul, regardless, regardless what issue they have. And don't forget Jesus' command. Love yourself first, like you would love your neighbor. Second, like you would love your God. Third. If you can't love yourself by not loving your neighbor, forget about loving God. You haven't even started. Boy, such a, a good place to, to leave the program with something uh, of substance to, to think about. And let me just take a, a few minutes here at, at the end to talk about, I mentioned at the beginning, you are doing Las Vegas and Los Angeles and, and, and doing seminars on the road. What do you have coming up? I think Argentina is coming up here uh, probably before we talk the next time. Yes, I have Argentina coming up. Uh, if there's anyone from Argentina listening, go to my Facebook page. I'm going to put something on my website also that will uh, uh, show the conference details. You have to come. I've actually got brand new information and messages that I will be displaying and evidence I'm actually going to be traveling with individuals who have had the same experience. And for me, confirmation is everything. So if you want confirmation, come to Argentina. Those people will be there and they will confirm. And you'll get so, that information at Robert's website, Facebook, as he said. What is your Facebook uh, under? What, what name should they be looking for? If they look for Roberto Gaetan, they will find it. And again, the, uh, his website has the information as well. And if you go to our website this week in America.us, you can get information and, uh, and, and we'll send you uh, directly to, uh, to Robert's link. Robert, it is always a pleasure. Boy, a lot of good stuff out there tonight. And we invite the, the listener to continue the questions. So we've got uh, material for Robert to address probably in about another month when he's back with us on the program. <laughs> Do that by going to Robert's website, uh, right. contact information. You can get with him and drop in a question for the radio and TV appearances or our website, uh, thisweekinamerica.us. Contact information once again. If you uh, give us a question, we'll uh, get it to uh, Robert and address it on a future program. Robert, as always, good job tonight. Thank you so much for being with us. Good luck with the, uh, the seminar in Argentina, and we'll talk to you very soon. Oh, my pleasure. And again, my thanks to your listeners for having uh, cooperated with so many wonderful questions. I hope that I've been able to motivate you spiritually and answer, answer your concerns. I am always 
available for questioning. All of my contact information is on my website. Don't be shy. Don't hesitate. I always answer every call made. And we can tell, I can tell by the tone of the questions that you're making an impact, a positive impact in the lives of, of so many people. So keep the questions coming. You'll uh, be able to submit those at our website, thisweekinamerica.us, or, or Robert's website as well, that information on our website as well. You're listening to This Week in America. We'll be back on today's program in just a couple of minutes. And once again, the website, very simple, thisweekinamerica.us.